What's up y'all? I'm doing a video that has been requested plenty of times and it's finally time for me to bring all my stuff together and show you how I set up and film my own deer hunts. I'm going to be showing you how I set up on the ground, how I set up in a tree stand, and how I set up in a saddle. Don't forget this time of year, spray permethrin on your clothes. Ticks are out, seed ticks are out, chiggers are bad. Past year or so I've been mixing my own permethrin mix called Tick Terminator. It's basically odorless. You spray it on your clothes, hang them up to air dry, and then it stays in the fabric after it dries for several weeks. The good thing about this Tick Terminator stuff is it's concentrate, so you mix it yourself. You put like two ounces and 32 ounces of water, if I'm not mistaken. I like to mix mine a little bit heavy, a little bit strong. All right, let's get into my self-filming setup. You always wanna have a snail. You always wanna have a snail on your camera. We're gonna show you the ground setup first, and uh, it's very basic, but I'll go through the camera and the equipment that I use and, and why I use it, and a couple of other good options that you might use as well. So obviously, your most basic thing you're gonna need is a camera and a tripod for hunting off the ground. I recommend a cheaper camera for someone getting started because a lot of people will jump into the self-filming thing. It looks cool, a lot of guys are doing it, and then they realize they don't really enjoy it. It's too much of a hassle. You don't know for sure that you're going to really enjoy it so I would I would encourage people to start cheaper so this is a this is not my main camera this is my backup camera it actually has been my main camera for a while this is a Panasonic WXF1 with a Asden SMX30 microphone on top this windscreen is homemade I made it out of some craft fur the original windscreen is just black foam and it works fine like when someone blows in your ear and make that sound when the wind blows in the microphone so that's why you put a windscreen now do you need an external microphone absolutely not i've gotten picky with with the audio quality over the years of filming and i like the sound of a good shotgun mic with a good windscreen picks up a lot better sound especially turkey hunting but but these cameras come with built-in microphones right here on the top of the camera is a built-in 5.1 surround sound microphone that is actually pretty decent if you're just starting out i would not worry about it uh this is a shotgun mic but it's a dual purpose stereo or mono if you put it on stereo it's got two microphones recording both sides shotgun microphone is directional records what straight in front of the camera anything behind the camera is muffled so as i walk around the camera i'm on the side and now i'm on the back i'm behind the camera and you can hear the difference in the sound I'm coming around the side again and I'm back in front that's what a shotgun mic does a stereo mic records left and right wide range it'll pick up a squirrel over there it'll pick up a deer over there uh, for turkey hunting I like the shotgun mic better for deer hunting doesn't really matter as much for talking to the camera shotgun mic for sure the camera I'm recording with right now is my personal favorite same price range as the Panasonic in my opinion they're neck and neck they're both really good cameras the camera I'm recording with now is a Sony FDR AX53. The microphone on top is a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, which is like one of their nicer uh, shotgun mics. That's a $1,000 camera with a $300 mic. If that's out of your budget, don't worry. You can still take plenty good video on a much cheaper setup. My cheapest recommendation that is my favorite that I have used in the past is a Panasonic V180. Just a little over 200 bucks for the camera very small lightweight camcorder and a 50 times optical zoom so if you're watching deer 500 yards across a bean field you can get zoomed way in on them and it's a very inexpensive camera that would be my cheap recommendation if you're just getting started but back to my setup you're going to want to get a good uh, tripod and it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be top of the line i started filming with the cheap walmart tri tripods and they work fine but they do break easily i'm pretty tough on equipment so past few years i've been using a manfrotto 190 go tripod and this is a fourth arrow fluid head not the best fluid head out there but that's what i got if you get a cheaper tripod it usually comes with the head this one did not so i had to buy a fluid head and all a fluid head is it's very smooth motion when when you're turning the camera panning it left right up down it has very fluid motion regardless when you get your tripod it's going to come with a base that screws into the bottom of your camera and i pretty much leave that base on my camera all the time so when i want to go film something 
slide it into the tripod, tighten that nut down so it doesn't slide around, and we are ready to go. Now there's a couple more features with a camera you might look for when you're filming. One is having a manual focus option. It's optional, but it does help, especially filming through brush. If you got a deer and you got some tree limbs in the way and you are in autofocus, all of a sudden it focuses on the tree limbs and your deer's blurry. It's a preference of mine. I always will have a manual focus. This camera and the Panasonic both have a ring around the lens. There's a little button on the camera to turn on auto or manual switch back and forth between autofocus and manual focus so if I'm filming through brush I hit that button switch over to manual and then I've got this ring and I can adjust focus manually the cheaper cameras like the V180 it's not gonna have that but you don't have to have it it's just it really comes in handy in certain situations another option that I need to mention because a lot of people use it is a remote uh, not all cameras can take a remote and what a remote is is it plugs into your camera people will put the remote on the end of this handle here uh, So you don't have to reach up and touch the camera. You can just have your thumb on it and Record zoom in zoom out focus just by using your thumb. I have never used one uh, a lot of people do use them for hunting it makes things a lot easier and I don't know, I've just always filmed the old-fashioned way and it works fine for me, but since I don't use one, I'm not going to recommend any specific remotes. Uh, I just wanted to mention it uh, so you all know there is an option for that. I think that covers the basics of the camera. You do want a camera that has good low light capability. All the cameras I have recommended have good low light capability because, you know, you're filming at last shooting light. You want to be able to see the deer on the screen and not have it be pitch black. GoPros are not very good in low light, although the newer ones are better than they used to be. The GoPro is a backup camera for me. I use my GoPro for fishing and as a second angle when I'm hunting. It is never a primary camera. Action cameras like GoPros have a wide angle lens and they have such a wide angle that the deer looks like an ant if it's not super close. Like a 10, 20 yard shot will look okay on a GoPro. A 40, 60, 80 yard shot, the deer's gonna look like a speck. So. Use the GoPro for a second angle if you got one. Uh, I've got a GoPro mount that goes on the end of my bow stabilizer, so I have a second angle from my bow filmed with a GoPro, but my main camera is always a camcorder with a good zoom. Let's go pick a tree and sit down. I'll show you how I set up and how I film. So let's see. If you're right-handed, like me, you want the camera on your right, and it's good to have some cover on your right that the camera can kind of blend into but you don't want it to interfere so we're gonna to have to move this bush a little bit maybe just trim it back just a little but we don't want to get rid of too much of it because it's good cover so right there looks good adjust the legs on your tripod I usually just eyeball it so we've got our tripod level we can raise and lower it I like it about face height or maybe a little lower because I don't want it to stick out too much you want this close enough that you don't have to reach out and grab it and cause a lot of movement, but you want it far enough that it's not gonna interfere with your weapon. If you gotta shoot this way, make sure it's not getting in your way. And also make sure if you're drawing a bow back, you don't want that string to hit your screen and snap it off. You may have to do a little bit of adjusting here. Pick up your weapon. If it's a bow, draw it back. If it's a gun, prop it on your knee. Make sure you got a good place to shoot, make sure your feet are not hitting any bushes because you don't want to be getting situated and kick a bush and then that's a whole bunch of movement. So just consider everything around you. you got, we've got good cover on the right. We got a bunch of branches over us so we're kind of shaded. Uh, we got a bunch of junk on the left. We got a decent sized tree behind us. I do a lot of ground hunting like this with a rifle, with a muzzle loader. Uh, do a little bit of it with a bow as well. And you really got to pick your setup carefully with a bow. Camera looks like it's in a good spot. I can sit right here. I see a deer coming through the bushes. Get your camera ready. If you see a deer through the bushes and they can't see you yet, they're still in some thick stuff, that's when you get your camera ready. Once you got deer in the area, keep your hand, keep one hand by the camera and one hand on your weapon. The camera is kind of like your weapon in the sense that you have to get it ready and aim it and use it if you're going to get the shot on video just like you have to get your weapon ready and aim it and shoot it if you're going to kill a deer. Doing both at the same time is a challenge. That's why a lot of people start doing it, buy a bunch of expensive camera gear, and then sell it the next year because they didn't like it. 
I also will film the woods, do some B-roll, which is just extra footage of whatever that you can throw in the video when you edit. Uh, I might film myself and do a little interview, be like, hey, we found this oak tree, it's dropping, lots of deer sign, hoping to kill one, do your little interview if you want. You can never film too much. If you film too much, you can delete what you don't want, but you, you can film not enough, so film everything you can and get a big memory card. Make sure you get the right type of SD card for the camera. This is a 4K camera, so I need a high-speed class 10 memory card. Bigger is better. I got 128 gig in the camera I'm filming with. I don't want to worry about filling up my memory card in a day's hunting. I want it, I want it to have plenty of space so I can record as much as I want. You can buy extra batteries for your cameras or you can get a little USB power pack and just plug it in and charge the camera while you're hunting. So once you got a deer coming in, you got your camera ready hopefully, you got your weapon on standby ready. It's the same thing with the camera versus picking up a bow. Do it when the deer's head is down looking away, do it when the deer can't see you, when the deer's walking, uh, anything where the deer's not going to notice your movement. Alright, so when I'm in a tree, I use a tree arm. I've got two different ones made by 4th Arrow. This one was given to me by a friend, Jim Riser, who decided he didn't want to use it anymore. This is a three segment. I prefer a two segment. The other one I use is a carbon arm two. Personal preference. This comes with a ball mount and a little screw. You loosen it up and you can adjust the level like that. It's got the uh, standard thread for a fluid head to screw on here, so we're going to go ahead and take that fluid head off my tripod and screw it on here. There are probably some cheaper tree arms out there that already have the camera mount and the handle, so you won't have to get a fluid head, but this, they just have a threaded bolt for a fluid head, so you will have to get a fluid head for it. Alright, I've got my saddle on. We're, I'm going to show you how to set this thing up in a tree saddle. I'm not going to climb up in my tree stand because setup is almost exactly the same. Uh, if you're right-handed, it's going to be on your right side no matter what. If you're left-handed, it's going to be on your left side. We'll clip in here. So I've got this bridge tightened all the way up so I'm closer to the tree so I can get this tree arm. Later on, if I want to be more comfortable, I can let some slack out and hang out. But we're going to move it all the way up here for now because we need to be close to the tree. So you got your camera, your camera arm in the backpack. I like to set it on my knees. If you're in a tree stand, you can just set it on the seat of your tree stand. Now, I'm doing this fast just to show you all how to do it. Obviously, you want to take your time if you're deer hunting. You don't want to make a bunch of noise. If you're being careful, the only noise you should make is a couple small clicks out of this ratchet. Now, how high do you put it? It seems to be a matter of preference whether you're in a saddle or a tree stand. In a saddle, I like the camera arm to go over the bridge like this. Some people run it way down here so they can pull their camera under the bridge. I don't like that, but you might like it, so do a little experimenting. I like to have mine no higher than face height. I want the camera either at face level or a little bit lower. And sometimes I like it more towards the back of the tree, but you gotta keep in mind your reach isn't gonna be as good around this side of the tree. Depends on the tree. You don't want it too close where it's all up in your business. This type of camera arm does separate from the base, so you can have them in your bag stored separately and put the base on first. Makes it a lot easier. Most camera arms actually are like that. And I'm gonna cinch it down quickly because we're not actually hunting, but you can do that slowly and quietly. Grab your base, give it a good hard shake, make sure it is not going anywhere. And then this one's got the ball joint, so we're gonna loosen that up. There's a leveling bubble where that bubble's in the middle. Tighten it down, slide it in there. Take the camera out. Put the camera on, tighten that down. Do a little test run. I'm gonna let this bridge out a little bit. So I'll be hunting like this. I will hang my backpack from a hanger when I'm in the tree. Uh, we're just gonna hang it from that ratchet strap for now. When you climb into a tree stand, we're gonna mount this on this side of the tree because we're gonna turn around and sit down in the tree stand. Whether you're in a tree stand or a saddle, you're gonna wanna play with the height of your camera arm and find out what is most comfortable for you. Weapon will hang on this side of the tree. 
weapon always goes on the opposite side of the tree as the camo arm. This is how I do it. And then when I climb down, when I'm done hunting, just do everything in reverse. Take the arm out of the base, back it in there, wrap that up. And I, I pretty much got this down to a system where I do it the same way every time. It's like muscle memory. I just throw everything on the tree and go. So, hopefully that made some sense to y'all on how I set up in the tree. This tree arm I've been using, I've only used it a couple times, and it's pretty good. Uh, I think I like my other one better. It's a Carbon Arm 2 by 4th Arrow I bought several years ago, and I have used it the most. If you think you're going to like it, go out there, buy you a cheaper camera. You can get a nice tripod or a cheap Walmart tripod. As long as it holds the camera steady and you, you can film with it, it it'll work. Uh, start basic, start simple. If you like it, hunt with it for a season. If you really like it and you're getting addicted to it, then you can start looking at a nicer camera, nicer fluid head, and step your game up from there. That's my advice on getting started. One other piece of advice that I almost forgot. When you're using the zoom on your camera, the deer's out there, you're not about to shoot it, but you want to get a good video, you want your good zoom on your camera. The cameras I recommend it all have a great zoom. You can zoom in on that thing, get some good video of it. When a deer's coming in close, if you're zoomed in on that deer and he fills up most of the screen, there's a good chance he's going to walk right off the screen before you actually get to pull the trigger. So keep that in mind, zoom it out a little bit, kind of show the bigger picture so you got more room for that deer to walk without having to touch your camera. If you're rifle hunting a field, a deer is standing there eating and you got plenty of time, you just zoom in and shoot it, that's fine. But if you're heat of the moment, especially bow hunting, close range hunting, keep that camera zoomed out a little bit or you're going to lose that shot. Speaking of getting the shot on video, don't let the camera cost you a deer. And don't let the camera mess up a shot. Don't rush a shot. I have done this. I am very guilty of rushing a shot because I was trying to get everything on video, trying to get an arrow in the deer before I got away, and I ended up rushing it, making a bad shot. Camera comes second, killing the deer comes first. If you get addicted to filming and you get better at it, then the camera can take priority and you might let a deer get away because it wasn't on video. That's your decision to make. That's up to you. Try to stay calm and collected. Don't let it get you into a rush when you gotta make that shot. If you're not confident, don't shoot. And if it walks off screen, that's okay. You can try again next time. I think that's pretty much all the advice I got for y'all. And been doing this for 10, 11, 12 years. A lot of my setup's still the same as it was. I've gotten nicer equipment, but I've kept it simple and minimal. Not a bunch of fancy gear. I do have a nicer microphone because I am picky about audio quality. But other than that, uh, my setup is very similar to the way it was years ago. Uh, if you just want to throw a GoPro on a mount on your gun, that's better than nothing. It's not going to be great, but if you just want to have some kind of footage, go for that. Hopefully this helped you all, and uh, leave a comment if you got any more questions or anything. We're, we are this close to deer season. Actually, the velvet hunt was this past weekend. Y'all shoot straight. Get out there, shoot your bow. Do your, do your scouting. Do what you got to do. We're running out of time. It's almost season. I will see you all in a tree very soon.